to your fellow man on earth, as far as I'm concerned, is to trust in God, but believe in democracy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure many people want to ask, ask questions. Uh, unless uh, it's not appropriate, I'll probably take the questions in batches of three or four. Uh, but could I ask you to please keep them fairly short and please keep them as questions, <laughs> which uh, on these occasions I'm aware they're not always questions, they're, they're statements. Uh, these are our speakers, they put themselves on the line. Uh, it's fine, we want you to ask some questions. Please think of that uh, rather than statements. I'm going to have some, I've got some many lines, I've got one here, two, three, and where's the first one? Well, I'll take it. It's, it's uh, thank you very much for being here. I agree with all things you said. Sorry, can you talk to Dr. Skeff? Dr. Skeff? Oh, that's what you said, Mufti Skeff. Dr. Skeff, do you think we can just take it? Dr. Skeff, First, quick clarification. Uh, Muslims do not uh, kill those people who leave uh, the religion. It's the job of the caliph. That's why a lot of people here said, no, we wouldn't do anything because it's not their job. The job of the caliph. My question is that you said uh, the Quran is a book of peace, Prophet Muhammad's teaching, uh, uh, peace of teaching. Uh, but if you read the Quran cover to cover, uh, you, you, you would have come across uh, chapter 24. Verse 55, and I quote in Arabic, Wa Allah in the Diyan of Minkum, Wa Hamidu Saliha, La Yastakhli Fanna Fidar. The Arabic word, Khalifa, Khilafa, La Yastakhli Fanna Fidar. It is a promise of God to those who believe in the righteous deeds that He will grant you Khilafa on the land. This concept is very clearly explicitly stated in the Quran. How can you, uh, as an academic, say that there is no concept of Khilafa in Islam? Would you like to address that question? One thing that strikes me is that any human system, that's why there are all human political systems in some form of punishment. Will, will be exceptions. Like, no system will be perfectly adhered to. And it, even in the, your own terms, that's clearly true. When the Calcalis kid murdered, I assume you don't think that was a good thing. That was a thing that went wrong, and wrong deed that become within the system. And they, so, any human system is going to have deviance. So as someone who's in the broadest sense of liberal, I would accept that. But in some ways, some governments are more like, in some respects, and some in others. But if you try and distance yourself from every existing system, that exists today. Now, Saudi Arabia accept doesn't go for exactly according to what you want. But, you know, they have various ex forms of execution you approve of. They have France, their constitution. They have an imam whose job is to interpret the constitution. So, why is it that you can't find that those countries which are closer, that there's not a spectrum of countries according to how much they follow, and that those countries which are closer to what you do are better? And why is it not that the great medical advances and economic progress of the last few hundred years, which were all its faults, have even achieved in the Christian and liberal West, were not achieved under the ancient Imam, uh, Umar, Amaya Samar? It's too big a question. I wasn't able to ignore it. You, sorry, just, uh, uh, my question was regarding um, the fact that it's really a formal phenomenon that we associate politics with the past moral behavior and it's quite pertinent as we as the current issue of value is expensive and debated now so we have this negative view of politics but within Islam if you look in uh, ancient civilizations as well we see that politics is associated with justice establishment of justice between human beings surely that cannot be divorced from morality and morality is surely derived from religion and therefore, I find that it's a somewhat artificial division to divide morality from politics, because that surely only suits an agnostic, atheistic agenda. So, really, my question is: if 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 evil, if just, injustice is evil, therefore justice is good. And if God is good, God wants justice. Therefore, God desires a just politics. <coughs> Um, thank you for both of you. Um, 
My question in two folds, um, really, uh, based on what you spoke, uh, many factors you've got to say. Uh, you, you mentioned in your speech that um, God doesn't care for our politics and He doesn't care for our votes. However, you see, and you mentioned many times as well, many references to scripture and, and use the scriptures to justify your argument. However, you see many times in the Quran, and well, specifically in the Quran, that there is references to moral action. And there's also some references to how we should govern ourselves and so on. Now, you distance the link between politics and moral action. You gave the impression that politics seems to our votes and our actions in terms of electing our leader, they have no influence into our decision making and so on. However, we see in the modern day, in the, in, in the situation in Britain, we have gone to war in Iraq, which is a direct consequence of the government we've elected. We've seen many uh, infringements on our civil liberties, such as this extending uh, of the um, detention rates in which people can uh, be arrested and so on. And I really want to kind of take this further into to what extent do you really take the accountability of that? Because in a system where God is dissociated from the system and where any kind of moral code from which he had outlined to us is dissociated from the system, who is it then that encompasses and devises the laws in which we arrive at? Um, and how do you maintain those laws throughout the, the history of time as well? I'm going to ask Hans at once first. I think it's a specific question here. I will have a question. I'm going to ask you this question. Two questions. Go on, go on. Okay, sure. Um, just to understand the question, you were saying that why I want to disassociate myself from any form of political manifestation of the sun today. Not quite. What I'm saying is, surely there must be some countries that are closer to what you believe than others. And why is it that the benefits you see don't flow in some part? Sure, I mean, to, to, be, be, to be honest, you know, I'm going to go away from that type of news discussion because for me it is very simple. Is Islam, I believe, has its own set of unique political values that it wants to propagate in its system about economic society from policy. Now, if I have that as a Muslim, then I'm going to compare that to liberalism, I'm going to compare that to every other ism, or even if it's Saudiism or Iranianism, yeah? So, when I do compare that, I see that there's, you cannot reconcile them. So, in my opinion, that's why I call for Islamic political values, and hence, the way I proposed the debate today was, there's a set of liberal political values which Dr. Sked has not addressed. Is those values that are incongruent with the Islamic political values and look at the manifestations. For example, the political values of liberalism, which I discuss are mm -hmm. individualism, or the emphasis of individual freedom specifically, they cause, which I don't want to go through my presentation again, social breakdown, political failures, economic crisis. Whereas I attempted to show that the political values that want to be propagated in an Islamic system are ones that actually produce positive results. I think that's what the debate is about today. You know, it's not a reductionist type of um, pseudo sermon. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a real debate about politics which affects people's lives. And God does, in my opinion, wants to know what our politics is about. Because wasn't it politics that caused the millions of deaths? Does God want millions of deaths? No. Wasn't it politics that actually causes social uh, disasters and breakdown? Yes, it does. So therefore, surely God will want us to uh, rectify those problems. Hence today's debate. Do you want cohesive values, political values? Do you want values, political values, propagated in society with mechanisms in place to solve problems? Or do you want laissez-faire, liberal values that, in all due respect, have caused nothing but misery for many, many people across the world? So I think that's where the debate is today. It's not this type of reductionist, uh, individualistic view on the Qur'an. Let the Qur'an speak for itself. It has over 500 verses with regards to legal rulings and politics. There's no point of uh, taking what we think is nice and rejecting the rest. Let's have a holistic discussion and not reduce it to something that can only be equivalent to a Sunday sermon. And the second part of your question, why the medical and economic parts are 
will not match in the caliber you do. I, I, I totally agree with you because I would believe that Islamic political values haven't been one properly implemented in society. Secondly, its mechanisms to implement those political values have not been implemented either in the past 100, 200 years. So I would definitely agree. But when we go and look into history, when the Islamic politic was manifest in lands such as Spain and across the Middle East, we see the golden era. We see something which is unprecedented phenomenon. Hence, we had multiples and multiples of Jews actually writing very positive things under the banner of Islamic politics. So I think that's what I agree with you because it's the absence of Islam, not because of Islam, and history tells us this. Okay. Um, you challenge in the Quran, but also on prophets and <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I think there are two questions that came up. Um, first of all, about the, the caliphate. Um, clearly, uh, in the prophets, uh, Arabia, uh, he was elected leader, other people were elected in Egypt, and that had to be uh, some mechanisms uh, to, in order to uh, come to uh, uh, and expand on the deals with a lot of that. But as soon as the prophet died, even you know, until about 50 or 60 years, it all went wrong. I mean, it doesn't work. Uh, you know, you, you get kind of uh, Osman's killed while well, he's reading the Quran, his blood spills over the pages of the Holy Book, and he's killed on his way to the mosque. The Imam Hussein is killed with all his cousins, nephew, brother, and son at the Battle of Karma. Uh, he's then beheaded. His head, with the remains of the others, is then sent off. And this is the Prophet's family. They're all the immediate descendants uh, of the Prophet. And so, within that generation, uh, the caliphate is steeped in the blood of the prophet, and nothing is happening that would suggest that there's some divine system at work which can protect the prophet's family or all the Muslims. Uh, again, today, uh, among those uh, countries in the world which call for a caliphate of Islamic rule, we get the most dreadful oppression of uh, Muslims, emerging Muslims. Uh, in the, the world since 1945, the greatest war fought since 1945 is fought between Muslims, between Iran and Iraq. The greatest terror seen in the world since then is in Algeria. 150,000 Muslims killed. And this has nothing to do with the liberals of America or French. This is not. <laughs> so you think. I well, so you think well, my question is now, first of all, I've got to get that. Uh, do you accept that there, as you said, the Quran is a book of peace and it preaches beautiful principles? Then, if, if that is the case, we need to take it comprehensively, not pick and choose. And my point is, if we take it comprehensively, the concept of Khilafa is dead. It's directly dead. I think so. Do, do you reject the concept or do you say uh, the concept is there, but it's not uh, compatible with modern age? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm not sure it's compatible today for me to be out to the prophets and to kill all his family under the council. It didn't seem to work then either. Well, I mean, what part of it? Sure. Let's get an answer. Where we probably differ is that I think of the, the sort of more Christian view that man is fallen and that man is flawed. And that whatever the institutions desire to govern whatever kind of polity you're talking about, because man, who is sinful, is going to be ruling them, even if he's got religious qualifications, he's still human, he's not divine, not even the prophet was divine. But because even members of his family fight and kill each other against everything the Quran says, against everything the prophet himself said, Muslims are slaughtering each other. And not only slaughtering each other, but devising means of killing each other, which are bizarre. Hamas has just reinstituted crucifixion for God's sake. For God's sake, in their lives. You had the, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem in the 1930s, who wanted to be a caliph. He became a friend of Hitler, had two concentration camps. No promise uh, from Hitler, he would put all the Jews in Palestine into Auschwitz. He was given a tour of Auschwitz by him. He was a man who was in Jerusalem who wanted to be a caliph. There are all sorts of people who want to be a caliph. There are all sorts of people who want to be a caliph. But just because they could call a person in the Quran, 
doesn't mean to say it will be implemented. If you're going to get anything else, the dictatorship, murder, secret police, hangings. Look what happens in Tehran. You get innocent children hung from trains, teenagers. And, and they say it's all in the name of God. I don't believe it. And yet there is another question to answer that. that from the, if you want to ask more questions, yeah, sure. Yeah, the brief comment, yeah, the brief comment is that if it gets to the dialogue and debate, it's only useful to acknowledge the premises I put forward in my debate and to also try and not to skid around those premises and actually attack them as, uh, as positively and constructively as possible. With regards to human fallacy, I agree humans are weak, we have problems. But the situation is very simple, doesn't is what would you rather do? Would you rather have a weak human in a human system or a weak human in a divine system? And that's the question. And we've seen history predict it otherwise. And some of the things that you're talking about, they're quite delicious to be honest, because it's a good Greek. It would be Greek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also Greek. It's fine. You don't care about it. But, but, but the, the issue is not the issue. The issue is Iran and Iraq were funded by America and Russia. No, I, 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 secondly, secondly, <laughs> if, I, 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 if you go to an argument, you have to have a discussion. It can't be this rhetoric. You see, that's my point. That's my point. No, I do. I Thank do. you. I, I agree with but you. But let's continue that. Good. 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 Salaam, that is what we are doing. Do you have a question to share? There was a question about morality. I don't in any way want to separate morality or justice from politics. The fact I was asking for it. But in my view, from what I was saying, morality and justice can best be served if there are <coughs> constitutional democratic guarantees that protect the, the, the lives of individuals. I don't think these happen in theocratic states. I think they do happen uh, in democracies. It's very funny, in Turkey, for example, one reason why Islamic Turks suddenly decided, and which they didn't want to do in the past, they didn't want to get into the European Union, and are desperate to become members of the EU, the Islamic government of Turkey, and it is because it thinks that uh, Muslims will have stronger democratic constitutional uh, guarantees for the faith in Europe than they would inside the command Turkey. So, yeah, uh, there is no, there's never been an ideal state on that. I'm sorry, the Christians, the Jews, or the Muslims. Man of God, we need the tightest democratic and constitutional guarantees that our life, our liberty, our children's lives, that all of these things will be protected from arbitrary rule. And I'm afraid there are people with religious qualifications in the Islamic world who like arbitrary rule, and whatever they may say in quote in the Quran, in the end, you get to see a theocratic dictatorship. It was lovely in some ways, under the medieval country, but it depends on the individuals, not on divine intervention. What I was trying to say, the main point of my talk was this, that if you believe that God is there to do your political work for you, you are risking, when you get to paradise, if you get to paradise, a benefit shock. Because you are there for God. God is not there for you. And you must not take God for granted. And you must not take for granted that God has a political agenda which is the same as yours. The whole history of the world is spilled in the blood of innocent people who were made dead because others believe in that apostasy. Well, there, there are at least six people who have been asking me questions, and I would like to give them an opportunity. Can I just ask anybody, questioners and speakers, to keep the answers to I'm going to be grossly unfair, and I have to ask the three, ask the three people who have been most persistent while these talks are going on. That's one gentleman right in the middle of that there. Uh, you, sir, no, no, behind you. You can ask me they just to answer a question, unless you want to go to the toilet. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, two in front, that's you, and then the lady with the green scarf. You are the three that have been most persistent. Then, 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 then I will take some from that side of the room. Okay, can you keep brief, please? Keep the answers brief, otherwise, it's simply not fair on that side of the room. Thank you for both the talks, sir. So, for some of them, that is long. 
Uh, I'm going to teach this in the good government version of Islam. So we out here we were just thinking about a particular view of what we should think Islam is. And you did, dedicated so many of your talk towards to liberalism. And I thought today's talk was Islam and liberalism. And the typical sound bites at the end because liberalism promotes human rights, it promotes the rule of law, and it promotes religious tolerance. And that's, that was liberalism for you and the rest of us by Islam. <coughs> But um, like I said, we've heard this time once before. And, uh, but if we look at the newspapers as an example, and I've got lots of newspapers in my bag, and I can show you the, what, the kind of things that liberalism promotes. So if we want to look at what liberalism is and what it promotes in society, and we want to look at what Islam is and what it promotes in society. And I think this, I thought this is what the debate was about. And it, it's, I don't know, in some respects, quite disappointing to that too. So show me how liberalism is better than Islam. Show me that Islam or liberalism is the way forward. This is the view that I picked up. This is what I think we're going to hear about. Why, why, why can't you get your answer? <laughs> <laughs> that actually takes it from that side. Um, thank you. I have one question for you to speak on. I promise I will keep very brief. From Mr. Alan Skier, my question is, you say that God is not dependent on man, but then you also quote the Quran to say that God wants a poor world and you want us to obey that. Surely if God is not dependent on man, why should we even obey him to begin with? A second question for you, Ms. Hunter, is, you said that Islam established establishes a symbiosis between individuals and the community. If there is, however, a conflict between the community and the individual, who wins? Thank you very much. Um, well, let, let me try to answer those three questions. Um, sorry if my idea of the didn't coincide with your idea of the debate. Perhaps my priority is a little different. Perhaps I'll take the advantages of liberalism and government. Uh, why am I a liberal? Why do I like liberalism? Because liberalism uh, protects my liberty, basically. Uh, I like to be free as much as possible. I have my morality, which I take from the Bible. I don't want to do harm to anybody. Uh, but I want, on the whole, uh, to be able to do the things I want in life. And I have all the different views and other views that I want without interference from the state and without people telling me what's best for me. Now, insofar as I don't harm anybody else in my activities, I think this is the best possible way to live my life. Uh, for my religious life, uh, I will do that through church or through prayer or through good deeds, charity or whatever. But I don't expect the state to control that for me or to force me to do this. Uh, I think other people should be allowed to live their lives as well. If they want to be Muslims, if they want to be Jews, if they want to carry out whatever religion they want, that's perfectly fine by me, as long as they don't harm me or undermine my liberty. Uh, if people want to, uh, I don't know, if they want to be gay or straight, that doesn't bother me either. That's part of their liberty. I don't want people, I don't want you to be homosexual, but I don't want them murdered about a kind of for everybody else. I don't want other states people who want to convert. I don't want a system whereby it's all wrong to convert to Islam. But if you convert from Islam to Christianity, the Catholic has to kill you. That doesn't strike me as fair. It doesn't strike me as dividing the ordained either. Uh, I don't see it in the uh, But I want a situation in which we can uh, have a government that uh, has a peaceful form of policy and on the whole, and I'm not going to try and defend to over there and not push anybody else. Likewise, I'm not going to defend Saddam Hussein uh, or the, 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 that to comedy for anybody else either. But what I am saying, the, th the record seems to be that democratic states have the most peaceful policies. But they don't put war with each other. They may go to war with dictatorships for various reasons. You may not like some of the wars. But in any case, I'm trying to give you some kind of idea of why I support a liberal view. Because I think my liberties, liberty brothers, uh, are protected. Nor, that's the thing to say, that a liberal state 
has no interest in communal values or in supporting the poor. Liberal states in the West have vast welfare states. They've had welfare states since the beginning of the 20th century. Welfare is not left to private charity. It's left to the liberal state to provide, to redistribute income between the two poor. And that seems to me a basic problem of modern liberalism. So I think between welfare, human rights, democratic elections, trial by jury, uh, no death penalty, no torture, uh, well, I don't know that's going to be sort of down the road. Uh, all of this seems to me to be a package of liberties which you find in the West and you do not, with all respect, find in Iran, you do not find under uh, Hezbollah or under Hamas. Hamas when it got into power because of its charitable reputation, began to kill off its opponents. When the revolution in Iran went into power, they began to kill off all their opponents. I told Khomeini, issued a death sentence on Salman Rushdie, about book he never read, and on a Sunni Muslim, but he was in fact a Shiite. So I'm not sure that in any way at all that a religious theocratic state helps liberty. I think the United States do. That is a fairly long way of answer. What was the second question? Right, well, I was really trying to say that, that there's been a contradiction in what you said, because I want to point you said, what well, is not I don't think so. The, 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 the thing is that God is all powerful, all knowing. He creates human life, and He expects as a result that uh, humans uh, should obey the, the revelation, the truth, the divine truth that's been revealed to them. Uh, and when the calls will come on the day of judgment, uh, He will pay up those who thought and then react. Uh, that means that humans are totally dependent on God. God is no way dependent on humans. I can't see. I mean, unless you think God is some kind of religious who's prancing around in heaven saying, oh heavens, you know, these people haven't worshipped me enough today, I feel safe. It's not like that. You're putting God into human terms. Again, that's a religious uh, You can't think of God as a human. God is a spiritual, inevitable, divine. He creates life, He creates the universe. Of course, we're dependent on Him. And there's no way that He's dependent on us. Certainly not wrong. This is question. I'm sorry, I'm being pushed to show sure. any of this. So yeah. take two questions over there. Yeah. No, I'm just I'm trying to gather my, my inner dispositions here because I don't know if it's only me, but I feel thoroughly patronized today. Um, because it's typical, that's why I go straight to my debate. I started liberalism or tyranny, even when I talked about that. You know, there's like political values are not therapeutic values. It's not like this Christian medieval. Uh, perception of, you know, impressing the masses and promising them paradise afterwards. It's more dynamic right? a system, which you have not addressed today. None of my propositions. I need money for a debate. You happily agreed. And I followed the debate and you said, please go for that system, George, because I will address what you're talking about. You haven't addressed any of my premises. I'm not saying that just to agree, I'm just saying that just to give people the money to I was quite happy you came for free. But the point is, but the point is, so, so you cannot say so that you're paying more than you for this. I won't be taking the debate. I am simply just saying what you told me. I will address your points, Mr. Stanford Georges, when you give them. And you have to say what of my points, your sound bites and generalizations. But anyway, to answer the lady's question. Um, Very quickly, because we're being pushed to end this. And yeah. this perhaps will address one of the premises that you did say. Sure. You said that liberalism doesn't have any ontological basis. But then you also said that we, we are flawed men and we must live in the divine world. What is the ontological basis? You said that while you were I said, what would you rather? A flawed man in a human system? Or, or a flawed man in the divine world? Well, I'm presuming you prefer the last section. So, my question to you is what is the Ontological basis of the divine. Well, do you want a proof of no discussion? Give it to me. You asked him about proof of liberalism. Why do you think you're answering? Two questions 
He says complete, that means varieties, and it doesn't mean it doesn't want to see political system in his mind. But it's confusing, and in the Quran he ends that surah by saying, when you're all called to me, when you come to heaven, then, and only then, he'll explain why. So I can't explain it, but he will, for you'll have to let me die. Okay, thank you very much. I have a great answer. We can't wait until we die because we'll be doing this for a while. It's always called the past. I'm very sorry, but there's several of you here up above with the time to go and do so, and I don't want to ask a question. You really haven't got the time to answer. I think that is a reflection of how important the discussion is, as well as something that we need to speak, is how I'm very important it is and how much it is that we need in this room. But I, I just would like, again, I'm sure you'll have to join Thank you both, Sandra and Adam, for the studio.